yes, it's the Fern Britton and John Leslie of Morning TV, um, uh, the Richard and Judy of Morning TV, and um, we've got with us on the couch, Enzo. <laughs> <laughs> morning all, morning, too early, far too early, and I've got a headache. You're looking rough this morning, Enzo. Oh, I don't know, most people say I look rough every morning. <laughs> oh, it's only your wife that says that. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, so Enzo is probably known to us all, mostly really from his career move in Korea. Absolutely. You were there, what, you've been back two years, is it now? Yeah, it is two years, a quick two years. I came back in November 2003. Okay. And since then, I've uh, spent two illustrious years in the van team. The van team. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And any good stories from the van team? Uh, lots of stories, pictures and costs. I'm sure I hear the drivers are pretty good. Yeah, um, lots of drivers. Um, four and a half thousand of them. Some, wow. Some very good and some not so good. That's very values way of putting it. Thank you for that. <laughs> so, do you mean, would you like to share with us any particularly amusing stories? Yeah. Obviously, there's nothing amusing about these stories that Enzo may or may not tell because uh, there's money involved and van costs need to be driven down. However, have you got amusing stories to tell us, Enzo? <laughs> I have. I think I spent the last three months um, collecting pictures to the extent that I took off my 15-year um, service um, certificate and replaced it with van damage pictures. <laughs> So, my favourite one at the moment is happened in Douglas Isle of Man. Uh, it cost us £10,000 to repair. Wow, £10,000. Uh, and the van had only been in the island for two weeks. So it was How much do they cost to purchase? Uh, they're all in, it's about £27,000 to purchase a brand new van. Uh, but anyway, we'll get back to the Douglas Isle of Man story. The uh, driver was driving along at 20 miles an hour, that's what he tells me. Um, oncoming car and to avoid the oncoming car, I'm not sure what side of the road he was actually driving on, um, he hit a sharp left. Sharp left was a, a bank of trees, uh, and one of these trees had a very thick branch, which um, went straight into the side of the shutter. Ooh. Uh, as he carried on driving at maybe 21, 22 miles an hour at this point, the um, branch stayed firm and ripped the back of the fridge out. So it was like the ve our vehicle ended up in two different pieces. Wow, do you have a picture that you could show us? I have. Excellent. And here it is. We'll put sure this one up on your screen so you can all see what we're visualising right now. So. Okay. That's and terrible. <laughs> I can hardly it. believe that could happen. What a shocker. And any others that yeah, come to mind? We've had about probably about four write-offs this year. Um, and over the last sort of 12 weeks, a busy 12 weeks, I suppose it's, um, it's that time of year, snowy conditions, um, bad weather. Uh, so we've had most of our write-offs in the last 12 weeks. Mm -hmm. In those 12 weeks, we've probably had around 20 vehicles that have cost us more than £5,000 to repair. Uh, the one sort of closest to me, really, over the last few days has been an Alfredton store, mm -hmm. where they've had two brand new vans, less than three months old. And on the same night, two different drivers, two different vehicles, one wedged itself between a tree and a house. And that cost us £3,000 to repair. And the second one, he rolled over a rock fencing out in the sticks and uh, anyway he managed to roll the vehicle and that's going to cost us eight and a half thousand pounds to repair. Do you have many drivers rolling vehicles? Um, once every month I'd say we have a, a roll rolled them. vehicle. Yeah, wow. well, I've had a, an image sent to me which uh, maybe you can get on screen a bit later yeah. from a, um, a phone camera Yeah. Uh, and that's a, a, one of our vehicles actually on its roof and that was down in Truro. So wow. are most of the vehicles that do roll, are they in the city or out in the countryside? Mostly in the countryside. They're getting so, up a bit of pace or...? I'm not sure, I'm not sure. I mean, maybe we haven't got enough um, speed signs out there in the countryside. <laughs> or speed um, cameras. I'd like to ask you a question. Um, have you ever had a dream about vans? Every day I have dreams about vans. Do you? Yes. I want to try and make them smaller. <laughs> or the vans or the dreams? Actually, I probably dream of a big car park. <laughs> lots of vans, all 1,500 of our vans parked up and no one touching them. Now that's more of a vision, really, isn't it? Less, less of a dream. Um, and uh, a few years ago, uh, around Christmas time, when there was a lot of snow, um, there, was a lot of, uh, uh, there was a press release that went out that said that uh, in Scotland, if we couldn't deliver the shopping with vans, we were going to deliver the shopping via Husky. Now. Uh, this, this really went, in and went into the papers in about 2001, Christmas 2001. Were you anything to do with that story, Enzo? Absolutely nothing. 
I'm amused with you, Mark. Says we've had Range Rovers, we've had Huskies, we've had bicycles, we've had all sorts of delivering. What was the bicycle story? I'm not too sure. You'll have to ask Dave Clements. Um, but you marketeers do tend to make some crazy stories up. But I'm afraid it's just Mercedes, VWs, and Ford Transits. We might make some crazy stories up with those some crazy accidents you were describing there. <laughs> no, it's, all the it's all about <laughs> the positioning. It's all about the positioning. Um, so you've been with us for how long, Enzo? With .com six years now, uh, with the company 16 years, uh, a bit half and half, it was part time, started off behind the deli counter mm -hmm. in my local hometown. Uh, and then I, I see you've kept the shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Got my trilby hat at home as well. Uh, and then went full time when I left university. So yeah, 16 years in total and about six years in .com. And always in operations? or. Yeah, always in operation. Started off with the original implementation team going up and down the country, um, getting the guys set up, uh, and then over to a more regionally based role supporting what we called then broken stores, mm -hmm. and then off to Korea to set up what we did in England over there. Okay, and what did you do in Korea? Uh, it was literally to sort of mimic what we'd done here, but over there. So they, they had, um, there's lots of good facts and figures in Korea in terms of internet penetration, in terms of the amount of people would have use the actual internet. So it had all the right environment to, to start an internet business. Yep. Um, so it's, so we went over there to, to provide that department for them. So tell us about Tesco.com in Korea. Are we just, um, or Tesco purely internet based or have we got any store presence? Yeah, when I arrived um, back in 2001, um, we had about 24 stores. It was a young business, but it was still number two in the country. Mm -hmm. I think it was a company called Emart that was number one that had about 60 odd stores. Um, big presence around the sort of um, cities outside of Seoul, equivalent to our London. Um, but you know, we went down the street and said, who did you work for? I said, it's Tesco Home Plus, that's what they called over there. Didn't have a clue who we were. But by the time I left, you know, Tesco had made itself a name and um, we're getting more popular. But um, 26 stores, I think today they've probably got about 40 to 50 stores. Wow. Wow, that's huge. But in terms of dot com, we operate in only, I think it's about seven or eight of those stores. Okay. And you met your wife in Korea, was she working at Dot I did, I did, amazingly. I went off for 12 weeks, stayed for two years and came back with a wife. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> that's pretty good odds. Absolutely. Right. Do you think that's a meter career, Enzo? Probably not. No. Probably not. Okay. You can pick up two, Ash. <laughs> On that note, um, we might go off to a music break. Thank you very much, Enzo, for coming in. Pleasure. And um, we'll be back soon. Alright, welcome back. I hope you like that other little bit of snippet of music video. Now our next guest is John Foster. John has joined us, very new to the team. I had the pleasure of meeting John at my induction two weeks ago. Um, John has been here for a very short amount of time as our new business development director, as you can see. Member of the leadership team from his little, lovely little badge. Very cute. Um, so John, I suppose for everyone at .com, they want to know a bit about you, where you've come from. So do you want to give us a bit of a career background? Okay, my 30 seconds. Yep. Um, well, I've most recently been a management consultant, yep. um, specializing in retail, which is quite fortunate. And prior to that, I worked briefly for Jaguar Cars as an engineer, as I'm an engineer by training, and uh, helped them improve the design of their headlights, would you believe? <laughs> so obviously, immediately obvious step to Business development. Yeah, business development. <laughs> Excellent. Good stuff. And um, your vision for business development. Dot yes. Com. In fact, my job is to come up with a vision. So to have one today would be a little premature. Okay. But we definitely need one. And um, I'm sure it's going to be very interesting with everyone here putting one together. So. Excellent. Um, no answers yet, I'm afraid. Okay. So when you're not at work, tell us about your. Do you have a family? Um, partner? Yeah, I do. I'm married. I, um, I live in Maidenhead with my family. I have two young daughters, age one and five, um, so they take up a lot of time and um, obviously a delight. Um, Maidenhead's an interesting commute, just determining at the moment whether I should be uh, looking for somewhere else to live, but uh, about an hour each way at the moment, so I should be fine. Yep. <laughs> um, that's about it. Excellent. And um, any other hobbies when you're not um, spending time with the family. Uh, recently, or? we're trying to keep trying to keep fit. Yeah. Um, some of the amazing things everyone I've been speaking to do all their triathlons and marathons and things I haven't got into that yet. But I guess with all those people around me, maybe I'll be yeah, 
nagged or cajoled into to giving that a go. So yeah, we'll Laura see, won the triathlon, didn't she? I think I Laura so. won the Tesco triathlon. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. There you go. And what did you think of the party? Excellent. Very embarrassing at times. <laughs> um, great fun and look forward to the next one. It's good to have all these rewards as I arrive rather than actually mm. after I've <laughs> done any work. So that's very good. Excellent. Okay, I mean, I'd, I'd just like to welcome you, John, to, uh, to Welling Garden City and, uh, okay. and I have a couple of questions, important ones, about um, how you, um, well, really, it's, um, what do you think of the Cirrus Sea Canteen? Now, you've been here a little while. A, a remarkable choice of sandwiches. Um, yep. the bags of crisps are good. Yep. Cues are not. Cues are not. Prices good. are reasonable. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe we should open it to the public. I don't know. That's the thought. <laughs> yeah. There might not be enough seating at the space. Seating's available there. interesting. Yeah. Uh, not as bad as yeah. car parking, mind. And the negotiating with the security guards every morning on the way into work. But uh, once I've got my pass, I reckon I'll be sorted there. Ah, fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. So talking of food, a bit of a theme we've had um, this morning is. We've been asking most of our guests what their favourite fruit would be, or if they were to mm. describe themselves and their person and characteristics as a piece of fruit. Um, An interesting spontaneous one. Apple, um, banana. We've had a banana and we've had a pear already. Um, so I have to do something different. Kiwi fruit. Kiwi's exotic, isn't it? Yes, it is. Almost from your area, I believe. Yes, That's nearly good. from that neck of the woods. A bit sharp. <laughs> to the taste but um, quite an interesting fuzzy exterior not quite sure what lies beneath and so that's what we've got ahead with BizDev BizDev Kiwi your plans <laughs> yep <laughs> watch out for the woman fuzzy be sharp underneath um, any more Ash? no I'd, I'd like to uh, thank John there very much for uh, talking with us this morning and uh, you can go and nurse your hangover now uh, I will do that um, I look and, forward uh, to meeting you all soon good and I'd like to uh, take us to another break thank you very much